Did you guys know that a true blue proud Voshite recently debated Matt Walsh? They sent me an email. The person after the next person to fill this space sent over and asked, you know, well, how did I do? Normally I don't go over, you know, people asking how did I do? But hey, Matt Walsh, I've always warned people. It is just generally speaking a, a, a bad idea to debate people in positions like this because again, the audience is against you. They have the microphone. Uh, you know, the person on the podium has a bunch of power that they can use. They have like the implicit uh, biases towards them in their favor. Um, it's a really difficult environment to like meaningfully challenge somebody who's acting in bad faith. I want to be clear though, like, I don't think there's anything wrong with publicly confronting bad people. It really depends on like the, the mood or like the nature of the issue, you know? Your average bl blubbering, blustered Republican politician, if confronted meaningfully by like a journalist or something, I think would sound really bad, right? Like if you got like, I don't know, Lindsey Graham and, and, on a podium and you were like, hey, Lindsey, and you like, you know, just some probing question or whatever, ask them about this, that, the other. I think they generally do pretty, pretty poorly. It can be valuable confronting them like that. But there's a difference between that and like going specifically to a political foundation where a guy who's a paid and trained liar is up there with like pre-constructed answers to everything you're going to ask him on. It just, it's a different environment, you know? You're not here to call them out. You're here to be like food for the, you know, for, for the, the, the trough, essentially. Anyway, let's see. How'd they do? I haven't watched it. Maybe, so maybe, it, maybe it's going to look like so bad and I'm going to be like, oh no, you know, hopefully not. I hope that that doesn't happen. Oh, wait a second. Didn't the guy who emailed me say that there was like sneaky editing that was done? Oh, I think I remember him saying that. Hold on. Here's the live stream link. I start at 4130. A lot of my discussion has been clipped out, either due to censoring or just bad audio visual, not really sure. And the audio sucks, so I'll attach a link to the video I took on my phone during the whole discussion as well. Heads up, the quality on that isn't amazing either. I was more focused on speaking than getting a good clip. Um, that's a bad thing, right? That's a bad thing, that their suicide rates are so high. Yes, yeah. um, And so, uh, one of the, the best ways to improve those is by providing gender affirming care, which in um, studies, I yeah, sorry guys, it's pretty much impossible to make out what's being said here. Why, why did they edit out portions from the original YouTube link? Put, um, as you say, the benefit, the well-being of human beings above the truth. And what I'm telling you is that that is the ultimate false dichotomy. We do not have to choose between those two. In fact, there is the, the ultimate well-being for a human being is to live in the truth with a deep recognition of truth. And that, that's how you... I mean, we, this isn't a new thing. I mean, we've, we do this already with... Uh, Are you f joking right now? This is the official video live stream? I can, this, this is... It's a, okay, hey, friend Voshite, okay? Congratulations, you must have done brilliantly, all right? Because every f trick in the book has been deployed in order to keep your voice from making its way to the air. You, like... They are literally like every conceivable alteration. What's going on here? I, I like they, they did the cut. They cut out stuff from a live stream and then there's the audio blowout and now the audio is gone. I can't blame your phone for not picking up good audio in like an area with high echo. You know, phones aren't good for that kind of thing. This is me in the vid. Oh, hey, F, F Web 01. What's up? All right. We've never seen anybody walk on water. You sound great here. We've never seen anybody walk on water, but there are okay, so wait. many. There are so many stories of people who have been great jawline, by the way. That's a that's a good rhetorical tactic. Changed by, uh, you know, by God. They've seen the light of God, and so okay. you sort of turn a blind eye Listen. to science, right? Or We're gonna need science because okay. it's for our benefit. We're gonna, we're gonna... Okay, man, okay, I'm, I'm really trying to piece together like an actual analysis of the situation. It seems like you, you approach this in a 
conversational, lighthearted, and non-confrontational fa uh, fashion, which I actually think is really good. Um, I think generally speaking in environments like this, like if you're going to go hard, you basically just need to be a protester in the sense that you're like shouting them down. And if you want to actually challenge them, you have to provide no hostility because they'll use any hostility from you as an excuse to go on like a three minute sanctimonious rant. Matt right now looks really weak. You guys can't see because it's behind my camera. He's literally clutching the front of the podium like he's a kitten making biscuits. Like he's been doing this for like 20 seconds. He's literally like trying to pull up the podium to hide behind it. Now, I don't know for a fact that you did or said anything in the audio version of this, like in, in, it's in the stuff I can't access to make him like this. But for somebody who has had media training, the fact that M Matt Walsh is looking like this is really embarrassing. Like, this, this I, he's basically doing like a visual showcase of the what not to do's in terms of like public speaking and, and body language. Um, and this literally does look like a virgin versus Chad meme. Like, I'm not kidding. Your jawline helps you out here, but you're literally mogging him in a separate camera frame. It's insane. So that's good. Um, you opened by trying to establish the sh like the shared belief that high suicide rates are bad, which you know I mean, yeah, you build you build a, a, a platform, you build a base, uh, and then I can't make out anything from your phone audio. I'm sorry, and we're here with this audio, and he cut in with this big sanctimonious rant on like the truth, and then it sounds like you rebutted by saying, okay, but like you know, uh, people have been saved by God, and like part of 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 that practice of 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 savior is like it's it's a matter of giving yourself to faith. So like you're not actually applying to a cult of the truth here, right? Like what you you believe in different things. They different things have the ability to move people. These are these are very complicated arguments. I don't know how well you would want to field them or how well you could field them in an environment like this. But I don't think it's like fundamentally unworkable. It really depends on the time you have and like. I don't know, the audio. I might have a better video link. Oh, FWeb, if you find a better video link, go for it. I'll let someone else ask a few, a few questions. Sounds but like I'll... they're kind of scared of the answer. <laughs> okay, never mind. This is just as good as I had hoped it would be. Let, let, let's let's let someone, someone else up to the podium because he's like gripping the... Look at that. He's like a little cat. Are you scared, sir? Yes. Before you walk away, though, hey, hey, wait a minute, 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 wait, wait. What is happening here? Because any, anyone who comes up, and if you want to argue with me about the trans stuff, it's, it's great. You know, I'm, I'm glad we can have the conversation. But we're talking about truth. We're talking about uh, uh, biological sex. So I always have to ask the question at the end. I mean, everyone knows what the question is going to be. Right off the bat. So he's about to say something really retarded. This looks really weak from him. Yeah, this is him trying to save it at the end. He's, he wanted to end the convo because he wasn't comfortable with where it was going. And then he remembered he has a stupid catchphrase He because he wants the last word, obviously. But he only realized it after my man had already started to turn away, which means he has to like, hey, hey, get back here, man. I didn't realize looking at this would be this funny. I feel like we're doing an analysis of everything other than the arguments because we can't hear them. <laughs> like, the, the, you know, I, I feel like I'm, 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 I'm eating a pizza crust only or something. I, you know, but there's still a lot to look in here. Yeah, I'm like a body language expert. No, those, are, those aren't real. This, you don't have to be an expert to see what's going on here. But, so, what, what, what is a woman? What, can you define the term? <laughs> So yeah, he's he's deploy he's he's deploying this as like a um as like a like a final let me have the last word because no one can get a definition to this, blah 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 blah. Um I for so for my money, and I feel like I would have to think about this to edit it down, because the the problem is is that their answer is wrong. They would go like, well, a woman is an adult human female. And if you pick apart at that, like it doesn't actually hold up to scrutiny. No technical definition does. You know, like with the with the adult things, like ah, oh, well, different cultures think you're an adult at different times. Is it like the nanosecond turn team? Well, because if they start to defer to any kind of like social bias, with like ah, oh, well, it's what culturally you consider an adult. It's like oh, I thought you meant I thought woman was a biological definition, and now all of a sudden it's contingent upon social norms. Hmm, that's interesting. And then like with uh, with human, that's not true because colloquially everyone refers to fantasy and sci-fi women as women. 
uh, like everyone does. I know it sounds really dumb, but if you think about it for a second, if they really thought human was part of the definition, why do they call elves women in fantasy stories? It sounds dumb, but like actually think about it. It, it like all the time in the fantasy, sci-fi, anytime something is like woman-like, they call it a woman. Nobody has problems with this. Even if biologically there's no question that they're not even human, they'll still do it. People like people say she with GLaDOS, you know, like what we, I guess she's technically a human brain, you know, spo spoilers, whatever. But they, hey, that's she's not biologically female anymore. Try to get that robot pregnant. I would, uh, by the way, because I'm built different. And then obviously, like definitionally female, it's like, oh, well, what do you mean the hormones? Okay, what do you mean the chromosomes? Oh, well, what about people with like, uh, you know, androgen sensitivity, blah, 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 blah. So the problem is Matt Walsh has a simple but wrong answer. And if you try to provide an answer that is simple but less wrong, he will take a bunch of time picking it apart, but he will not let you pick apart his wrong answer. For my money, I feel like the best thing you can do is say, what is a woman? I know what a female is, but our understanding of woman seems to be a kind of vague social uh, uh, construct that shifts time to time and uh, culture to culture. Uh, that's like really open to attack, but you would have to attack their counter answers because obviously there's a million things they could say to that. But there's no real way to there's no real there's no real way to address this um, topic without getting at the fundamentals of etymology. You know, so a, a good example of this would be uh, l let me try to think. Okay, I recently listened to an episode of Well, There's Your Problem podcast, the show about disasters. You should go subscribe to them, even though they all hate me or whatever, because they're great. I, I watch every episode. Where they had an expert on forestry come on, and they were talking about the technical definition of forest. And if, if any of you guys are like um, engineers, or you have like MSs or whatever, or you're even remotely familiar with like uh, the specifics of any technical field, you know every field that people study has 18 trillion hyper-specific technical definitions that nobody uses colloquially and might not even be internally consistent. Like, if you if you want to look into, like, soil engineering, uh, I forget the technical term for that. It's like ge geoandroponic. There's some specific term. It's like there are, like, 17 different terms for different kinds of soil. And the definitions are like, mm, okay, so this one is like average grain size between 15 and 25 millimeters, and this one's between 26 and 40. And then it's like, okay, so you're really telling me that this becomes this if it moves one nanometer over the line? And the answer to that is like, it's a technical definition, bro. The only reason we have these definitions, the only reason we have any definitions, is so we can like apply some basic understanding to the world. The categorization makes stuff easy for the rest of us. And the term woman has a lot of categorical use. Even a gender abolitionist like me recognizes that. When somebody says, I'm a woman, or is said to be a woman, or anything else, what I think that means is like, we have a bunch of expectations uh, and roles and um, obligations and cultural associations that go along with being a woman. And, um, and, and when a person says I'm a woman, what they're basically saying is like, let me in on that, that I want that block of things. That's the space I want to be in because keep in mind what it means to be a woman in most cultures, like differs massively, right? Like a person who is a good woman back in the 1600s probably would have been like, I don't know, a milkmaid who gets pregnant 48 times and is good at farming stuff and dies at 32 or something and probably doesn't mind her abusive husband like sleeping around with underage girls. That's like the ideal woman back then or something. And then the ideal woman in like the 1900s and like the 2000s, what is the ideal woman in like ancient Mesopotamia? What were they doing in Babylon, right? Like the, the, the expectations we have for women change so, so, so much, right? Like part of being a good woman in a lot of like Muslim cultures is covering up your hair. Uh, and over here in, in like the States, having like beautiful and um, visible hair is considered a very feminine trait. So it's like, you know, there's not really an objective argument here, you know, for, for either case. These are cultural standards. So basically, I think of it just like somebody wants to be a part of that group because a pure biological argument for what a woman is does not work. It is internally incoherent. Not only are there exceptions they can't make accounts for or they start doing that thing where they're like, OK, well, there are exceptions. And then you're like, OK, well, are trans women exceptions to your basic rules about the biological nature of women? And they're like, no. No, those can't be exceptions. Only these other exceptions you just brought up, but not these ones, you know. 
what a, what a woman is, let's say biological reality, 99% of the time. But the 1% can include trans people, only other things. <laughs> it's, it's just stupid. So anyway, so what's the short answer? I, I, there isn't a short answer. That's the problem. That's why people like Matt Walsh and grifters like him are so hyper fixated on the what is a woman question. I, it, honestly, I feel like rhetorically speaking, it might actually be more effective to twist it around on them. Where you ask, hey, Matt, what's a woman? He's like an adult human female. And then you do the thing I did where you're like, oh, well, different cultures say that adulthood begins at different times. So you saying that one person would be from a woman in one culture and not in another for no reason other than social standards. And then he'd be like, probably. Oh, well, I mean, like, you know, adulthood in the sense of like you, you turn 18 or ooh. Do you think he would say post-pubescent? It is Matt Walsh. Actually, I've never gotten an answer to that from a conservative. If he's because if he says a woman is a post-pubescent uh, uh, like human female, that opens up that opens up some pointed questions uh, directed at him, you know. But no, he would have to bite the bullet and say like eighteen, right? It's like oh, eighteen. So you're saying that like so like you're not a woman at sixteen in the UK, like that that's not a woman. Like we just we're just deciding arbitrarily on like the US. Uh, age of majority time. That's when we're doing it, like right here on the second too. So not a woman one second before a woman afterwards. That's kind of a weird biological definition. What biologically happens in between being 17 years old, three, blah, 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 you know, like, but you do all of that, right? Um, or like whatever, whatever, um, you know, in, incisive uh, uh, commentary you want to go down. I feel like being get, getting on the offensive is probably the best answer. Anyway, sorry, I'm totally rambling here. Let's uh, let's let's hear how our ultra mega giga Chad responds to this bad faith question. I think the answer to what is a woman is um, a person who aligns with feminine traits that we traditionally associate with females. So this this is another reason why this environment is bad because like the crowd is literally trained to shout down any answer the guy gives, right? Like that this this is not like a, an environment to really confront an idea. They they started screaming before he even said anything. Or that people that align with the feminine side of the spectrum. So that's my answer. Um and I think that answer should uh the definition of Everything changes over time, and okay. as All we right. continue to learn more about what humans can really be, um, I think that can continue to uh, grow. And I hope I hope you understand that. That's a, wait. Okay, actually, that's actually a really good answer. You're you're continuing with the like um, like making an appeal and the kindness and so on. Everyone else is murmuring too. And the reason for that is because you're not saying anything like super incisive they can cling on to. That was really good, actually. It's it, it, the, the nature of this question makes it almost impossible to answer in this environment, but I genuinely feel like that carried really well. Not just that, but your cadence too. You're not, okay, guys, this is a really subtle thing, but this is actually really, really important, okay? When you're dealing with an audience that's attacking you like this, all right, people respond with jeering, in response to certain audiovisual cues. And he is toning down the aggression by not emphasizing any of the lines that he's saying. He's not saying anything as though it's meant to be a punch or a blow. He's not delivering any of these lines as though they're meant to be a confrontation. He's answering in a neutral, but emphatic and emotionally, uh, like, like uh, enthusiastic, I'd say, or like engaged tone, which is really difficult to intuitively attack, you know? It's really, really difficult to, um, to, to listen to that and, and just like feel mad at them. Whereas if he was like, listen up, a woman is anyone who defines themselves as one, like you, they wouldn't even finish the sentence before people be scream jeering at them. You know what I mean? It's, it's, it's actually really well handled. Okay. But, but uh, I just want to make clear that you. And talking over him, Chad. I, I can't hear you. I can't, as soon I can't as I brought you. up a point that you... I can't hear you, pretending I can't hear him. Actually, with how the audio has been going, he might actually not be able to hear him. I didn't want to respond to you, so... I, I couldn't hear what you... you say, say your last comment. I'll... I was just saying I want to point out that you asked me to leave as soon as I brought up something you didn't want to respond to, so... What, so what did I, I want to respond I to? Freely leave. I, I mentioned religion being... Um, a source of where we deny or look. He doesn't want to be here so badly. 
he there's nowhere on earth he wants to be less than this place right here past science uh for the greater sense of humanity uh, and I, you asked me i to did leave. respond to that okay i, I responded respond to that quite, to quite directly so i'm sorry i can't hear you all right thank you for your question next question so, i still can't hear you i can't i i can't hear you you gotta speak up all right Thank you for your question. Okay. That, okay. This was re this was actually really good. Um, you're you're uh, you're 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 repping the flag well. Um, hope you yeah. I hope you passed out uh, little Vosh stickers to to people in the audience. That was really good. Um, oh my god. They can't even muster any applause for Matt because Matt's behavior and his body language are so weak here. Yeah, he look at him. <laughs> uh, I do want to. I do want to just just to, if we could follow up on one point, uh, a woman is, is someone who aligns with feminine traits. You know, two problems. Oh my God, he's resp. Oh my God, he took a second to chill, and now he's responding after explicitly already having that guy leave. Oh my God, dude. He's going for the clap. Well, he got really weak claps after that other guy left because, like, again, he's not presenting himself as very strong here. And now this? With that, number one, uh, you are reinforcing very strictly the very gender roles the left has spent decades trying to tear down. But number two, you know, what does the word feminine mean? The word feminine... Um, well, I mean, as a gender abolitionist, I, I guess I agree, but it's like a temporary hold holding point, right? Like... It's, you're not really reinforcing gender norms by saying that being a woman is associated with femininity in the context where everyone already believes that. You're basically just pointing out, like, colloquially, what we already have. He said spectrum. Yeah, he said spectrum, which he won't address because he has to pretend there is no spectrum. But he's, he's, he's going to pretend that what my boy said was, like, a woman is when a person wears a dress or something, which is not what he said. But, you know, it's, again, like, he's just, he's just like, shower arguing now means things that are associated with women and so you're defining woman by saying the people that do things that are associated with women and so that's a circular definition doesn't make any sense okay uh also man i i this meme that circular definitions don't work is completely made up by the way uh the the idea that a de the only thing a de so def first of all definitions don't have to do anything they're not like we just construct, we just, we make it up. We, you know, they're not like mathematical proofs where you're trying to describe the universe in some kind of, like, provable and repeatable fashion. You're literally just making shit up. You can make terms up that have no definition other than themselves, you know? Like, it's, yeah, it's like the, yeah, there's, there's no problem with that. If you think that that's not useful, you can try to make an argument for a more useful thing. That's fine. But the idea that a definition is, like, not isn't. Also, definitions can often be circular if we don't have that many terms associated with them, you know? Yeah, what is a book bag, a bag that holds books? Yeah, no, like, it's like a book bag. Is, well, there's like 15 definitions for a book bag. It's like, well, what, what like, logically is it like a book that looks like, or like a bag that looks like this, or a bag that holds books? Um, or like, what is the definition of a chair, right? Like, depending on how technical you get, it's like, ah, okay, well, a chair is a, is a horse, <laughs> you know? Um, it's just really stupid. The real question is, how useful are these definitions? But nobody asks that question because the moment you get in that direction, you start, like, asking really fundamental things like, hmm, maybe gender is, like, a really stupid idea after all. Do we really need it? And then people don't want to go down that road because it's scary. Definitions aren't real. We don't find them or discover them. We, we, we construct them for our own purposes. Yeah, yeah. People, yeah, people don't like the, the semantic stuff. They don't like linguistics. Linguistics is very powerful stuff. You know, people, um, people don't understand how far down that rabbit hole you can go. That's not true. I found a definition in the forest yesterday. Yeah, based. We'll use that one then. Anyway, um, to, to my boy, who I don't know if they're still in chat. You did very well. Um, thank you for showing that to us. I'm sorry we couldn't go over all of it, but I think we got a lot out of what we did see. One of the best examples that I can think of, of like the circularity of definitions, is the idea of whether or not somebody is cool. Basically, almost any subjective descriptor of a person is going to fall into this trap, where like, a person is cool when they act in ways associated with what is cool. Um, you can come up with synonyms for cool, like, oh yeah, somebody being cool is when they're being rad. But you can't, like, that's just circularity with synonyms. 
you're not actually getting at the definition. And the, the, the honest like definition there is just we, we created a term to describe a vibe. That sounds anti-scientific, but what it really is, is just like, it's linguistics, baby. I, I actually think there's more harm in like trying to force a kind of like scientific positivist attitude into everything ambiguous in the world than there is in accepting that is things that we create, like definitions, are naturally going to be subject to bias and ambiguity, you know? Man, what's that line from The f Bachelor, man? The, the reality of truth does not do as much good as its illusion does harm. Was that it? Oh, man. You can have a definition outside synonyms, but it can never actually hold the scope of the word. Yeah, you can come up with, like, associated concepts. You can try to, like, bite chunks out of it, but you can't really encapsulate cool, you know? There is no single one perfectly captured definition of what is cool outside of being cool is when you're cool. It's cool to be cool. That's the only fully 100% uh, captured, like effective, all-encompassing definition you'll get. And everything else will just be attempts at gesturing at that central truth. It, it's complicated. The definition of cool is adult human cool. True. All words are like that. Yeah, well, the difference is that technical definitions are usually made with an understanding that they're arbitrary. Like, when people say this kind of soil is 15 to 25 millimeters and this kind of soil is tw like 26 to 40 millimeters, if you ask them like, hey, what if we made the first soil definition 15 to 26 and the second one 27 to 41? Huh? They'd be like, shut the fuck up. Uh, can you objectively explain to me why micrograin soil can be no larger than 6 millimeters when in reality 6.5 would still be essentially the same thing? Shut up. Shut up. This is a gun. Shut up. Like, it's like, literally though, like, <laughs> they would simply break your legs, right? Like, um, can, why objectively is that the case? Yeah, it's, it's, uh, yeah.